In this video, we're going to go over how we created a mine flail for the Mauler tank. We'll go over some ref and design, go over the iteration, the iteration, and more iterating on the design, the modeling, the paint, and then we'll take it for a test. I've always been fascinated by the idea of a mine flail being attached to a tank. This sort of device that just spins these giant weights on chains and kind of smashes the ground and blows up any mines that come into its path. I've seen model kits of these and like in this video I've seen RC versions of these and they just look like a blast to play with. You know you just turn on that mine flail and it just starts ripping up the ground and tearing things up. And it's kind of a really neat engineering thing. Sort of like the you know, the bridge layer tanks or things like more engineering kind of vehicles. This is a, sort of a support vehicle. And I think those are always kind of fun. So it'd be awesome if G.I. Joe had one of these to, you know, get Cobra mines out of, the, out of their path so they could move forward into battle. And then I saw this post on Facebook by Matt Paul. He did this really amazing uh, Mobat mod where he put a mine flail on the front of, um, on the front of his Mobat. And he, he did some other customizing with like side skirts and things. Really awesome. And, and it just like, clicked in my head like I got to make one of these and make it for a you know for a mauler the other piece of the puzzle was looking at some of these little uh, motors I had uh, Joe Mauler on his um, YouTube was talking about like different kinds of ways to power maulers and things like that and maybe using some of these little engines or little motors and so I was holding them up you know against the mauler and looking at them and I was like wow this could totally power that mine flail if we just put this little motor out on an arm and had a cylinder between it that would be your mine flail, like pretty much done and ready to go. And we could attach it to um, a different kind of uh, circuit and control it, turn it on and off remotely. So I just got to sketching, you know, did some measurements on the front of the mauler, thinking about how I'd attach it. Then I also got the idea of using these Lego chains for the chains on it. I thought they'd be great because maybe we could just snap them onto the cylinder. And then if something got stuck or snagged, it could just pop away. The next step was going into 3D and just modeling up uh, what I'd sketched. This always helps me figure out the dimensions of things, you know, how things are going to work, what are all the pieces that I need. And it also got me thinking about how I was going to make this in two different parts. One was going to be PLA, which is more flexible, harder plastic because I'd gotten a new printer that'll print that material. And then I would later add sort of more detailed parts using resin. I thought this might be a better work process and allow me to iterate and try out things much more quickly. One of the first things I wanted to figure out was how I was going to attach this to the front of the mauler. To start figuring that out, I turned to Joe Mauler's um, Canon support attachment. This is a nice piece he's got up on Thingiverse and just gives away. And it does a nice job of just popping into the mauler without, you know, needing any kind of modifications. So I made two little pieces that popped into those same openings on the mauler and would allow this kind of bar I was just using, you know, as a placeholder to attach. And then a lot of the weight kind of fell in that front lip there, those two pieces that, you know, stick out like a lip. And I felt like those could support a lot of the weight. Then I also played around with the idea of like maybe something could attach where the mud guards go, you know, this kind of thing that would snap on. And that worked okay, but I was worried that that would put a little too much stress on those mud guard pieces. And they just kind of snap on and kind of feel a little bit too loose. The next thing I tried was sort of a combo of snapping onto the top, like over those um, those openings, but also grabbing those bottom pieces too. So you'd kind of like put it underneath those bits and then snap it on the top. And that actually held really nicely. I thought that was pretty good and pretty strong. But I was still a little bit worried that the ends, if one rocked more than the other, it could just pop right off and then you'd lose the mind flail. Here's the example I went with mostly. This is, you know, I'm still iterating on different ones, but I found that like those two bits that would hook in there felt really good. But then having a little piece that would go underneath and snap underneath and hold it was really good. And then most of the weight would be held on that lip, those two little lip pieces that are sticking out. And then here I'm iterating with the size of the motor. So thinking about how big the housing has to be, how deep it has to be, to contain that that entire motor unit. And then thinking about like, that's a bit of weight that's gonna be hanging out in the front. So I kind of made this sort of key system where that arm and the other arm and the other side would just kind of slip over that main support piece. And then this is a mock-up of the cylinder. So this is mostly to look at the accuracy of um, how it attaches to the motor, but also 
how good the um, the studs are that I created and how well the chains could pop onto those. Yeah, you know, I wanted to make sure they were strong enough and accurate enough that when I put the chains on, they wouldn't immediately just go flying off. And so here's the first test, trying out the motor, looking at the speed, and it felt pretty good. This was a tough thing to nail down too, was that I didn't want the flail to spin so fast that it was just like insanely, you know, the RPMs were just crazy. But I wanted it to spin fast enough that the, the centripetal force kept the chains out, you know, mostly straight, and it felt like a real flail. And that was feeling pretty good. That's with two uh, AA batteries, you know, which is a lower voltage than what I would get when I hooked it up to the actual, um, the, the electronics inside the, uh, the RC Mauler. But it was a close approximation, and it and it was good for testing. Here I'm I'm showing off the uh, mostly the final design for the uh, attachment to the tank. So that was a pain just trying to really figure that out and nail that down. And here I've got it nailed down to like those two parts kind of go in. Then there's some lower parts that align it to the hull, and then using uh, rubber bands just to hold it down, um, so it'd be nice and snug. And I like this idea because it gives a little flexibility. If something does really smack up those the ends of the arms, the rubber bands will give. And they'll either snap or just flex before breaking the arm off of the, um, the mine flail. And here's just the little pieces, kind of production line of little cylinders. So I opted to make the cylinder in pieces instead of one giant monolithic cylinder. The advantage to that was if something printed badly or, you know, got messed up or broken, I could replace that component easily without trying to reprint the entire tube. And so that worked out really nicely. And then I was just drilling out the holes to make sure that they, they fit the metal um, shaft I was using to hold up all the pieces. I decided to use, um, use metal running through the center because I felt that would just give it the strength it needed. Um, it's pretty light just adding that little bit of metal. Um, versus the strength it gives it and I wouldn't have to worry about the cylinder breaking or warping or doing anything weird Especially when it's spinning under load, you know, and it might tend to like do some crazy things Also decided to have a bearing on the one side So the the motors on the one side then you've got the metal shaft running across and then uh, The metal shaft would go into a bearing that's seated in the plastic on the other side and I thought this would just be like you know the way to go that way there's as little friction as possible the motor is you know it's it's under a bit of stress so i didn't want it to you know have to deal with any friction it's got enough mass that's trying to spin and plus if we run into something or we're hitting objects i want all that momentum to carry into the object and not not have to deal with like you know plastic rubbing on plastic and you know heating up and even maybe melting at some point if the rpms are going too fast or it's going too long and the test was great, like it spun just so nicely. It, it definitely seemed like, like worth doing that. And I also happen to have those bearings around, so I'm like, hey, this is a good chance to use these. This is the, the first test trying it out, and it worked you know, pretty flawlessly. I was really excited, because I was worried that there might be like some imbalance, you know, where you might get like too much vibration if it's not evenly, um, you know, the weight's not evenly distributed, but it looked like everything was centered pretty well and you know it was working really well um you know and i tried to offset all those little cylinder pieces which worked out really well the fact that i did make them all um individual pieces each one was offset by i think like 90 degrees and this i thought would create a more you know visually pleasing like pattern for the chains and just look more interesting than if they were all lined up in a row so it'd give kind of a more um a more organic kind of like random feel to it then it was time to see if I could hook this up to the electronics, and that was pretty easy. I just gave a channel over to the, uh, the motor and hooked up an uh, electronically controlled switch. So when I flicked that, that switch on my remote, you know, it just powered the motor, and the power came off of the, um, the battery that's running the tank. So everything was great. And here's a test, like running it, you know, full on with the, uh, the cylinder and stuff, and it, it looked great. You know, and I still had the functions for the... Uh, you know, for the elevation of the tank gun, nothing was interfering. So that was perfect. That was exactly what I wanted. Just like plug and play with the existing system. The next question was, would it work with the chains? And it did. Like I had all the chains on there, everything spinning. And I was holding it with one hand and there wasn't a lot of like vibration or shake or anything like that. So that had me really excited that this was going to work because at every stage I was worried that there would be, you know, a lot of vibration or shaking or 
you know, the motor wouldn't spin fast enough, but um, spending all the time on those tests really worked out well. And here you can see the functions on the RC unit, you know, the turret rotation and elevation still works. So now finally the moment of truth, how would this function in battle? So I lined up some uh, retro Cobra troops, got the mauler in position, made sure all the RC functions were working, and then flicked the switch and it fired up. And now would it survive its first impact? Boom, it just took him out. It just mowed through the troops. And you can see it flew off, a, it flung off a couple chains, but that was fine. It still worked fine. And I was super excited. Like this, that was exactly what I wanted to see happen. Um, you know, it didn't break apart or get um, broken or everything just seemed fine and worked out great. So all the iteration was done. I knew it was functional. Now I had to make this thing look like it was something that belonged in the G.I. Joe world and that it looked like it would be attached to a mauler. So I looked at some of the visual cues on the mauler, some of the details, some of the different uh, ways that rivets were put in or bolts. And so I tried to match up with that when I was designing the sort of casing that would go over the PLA kind of functional bits that I'd already created. And so we got to 3D modeling, printed those out and did some test fits and it looked really good. So these slipped right over that that sort of framework that I printed out of the uh, the PLA and gave the more detailed kind of resin prints um, a way to kind of up res this whole kind of project. Another benefit of this was that those slipping over allowed me to have access to the motors and the different inner workings like the bearings and things like that later on in the project. So, you know, if something did go wrong, which at the time of making this, I did have something go wrong with the motor, and I was e easily able to slip those resin pieces off and get access to the internals, to the motors and the wires and things like that, and then slip them back on without having to worry about, you know, breaking something or having to cut something open. Also wanted to finalize the electronics at this point, so dove into my bin of stuff, grabbed some wires, and, you know, just went about trying to do a final version of this. So really soldering all the connections, making sure the the leads were soldered to the motor and that everything still ran, which it did. So that was good. You always want to test run it before you install it just to make sure everything's right. And then those little bits on the side, I decided to pin those. So I just drill a little hole and then put a pin in it and it allows those to have a stronger uh, physical connection beyond just glue or adhesive or something like that, which you know can give a little too easily. So here's a little final flyover of everything, and I think it's looking pretty good. One of the things I always think about is, you know, would I buy this if I was a kid and wanted to put this on my mauler? And I'm definitely feeling that excitement that I would pick this up for sure. And now let's get rid of that gray. So time to get some paint on there, really coming into the finish on this. So I just hit it with some, uh, some gray kind of tan uh, paint, but that did not match the mauler color. It's a really unusual color, almost like an orange. So I just, as I did with the hatch that I made for my other mauler, I just, you know, mixed some paint, tried to get something that, um, you know, had a bit of like red and yellow in it, but then with a little bit of brown to kind of darken it. And then just started hitting it with the airbrush. I don't use my airbrush that much, but for this, it was the only way to really get the paint um, to match and to look like the actual mauler color. And I think it got pretty close. The final ones may be a little bit too saturated, a little bit too orange, but then that kind of faded over time, so I think it worked out. So after a few coats of paint, I thought it looked pretty good. I added a few little stickers, a little danger warning kind of symbols that, you know, all the G.I. Joe vehicles have, and I think that really, you know, finished it off and kind of sold the final look of this, you know, as a cool little attachment add-on to the mauler. And so I put it on, fired it up. This one's in slow motion, so I could kind of get a real good look at the chain spinning around and I'm really digging it. it. It fits in well with the mauler. It looks like a piece that, you know, you might actually buy from Hasbro and attach to your tank and, uh, and just excited to, you know, get this out there and let the Joes kind of use it against Cobra in some battles. Here's some mind clearing action. These are just those, uh, that game connect Four. I just grabbed some of the pieces off there and put them on the floor to see how it would uh, it would work out with those. I was hoping it would more like smash them out of the way, but it kind of just more like pushed them along. But I was pretty happy with that. 
you know, I think at some point maybe I'll design some kind of Cobra landmines or something that this thing can really like throw out of the way. And you can see Tripwire there, happy with the results. Although it, this does kind of put Tripwire out of work, doesn't it? So maybe he'll be a, uh, a tank commander now. And this is just me kind of showing how you can, um, you can release this from the mauler and, you know, you just got your mauler kind of back to stock. You know, it's a little fidgety trying to get those little bits out of there, but not too bad. And then you just have to open it up and disconnect the wire. And, um, you know, that's it. You're back to a Mahler sans uh, mind flail. So summing up this project, I think it was a big success. I love being inspired by other creators like Matt. You know, someone who does something then really gets me thinking like, oh, I got to go do something like that. But, you know, with a, with a different tank or a different vehicle. And it's just really exciting to, to kind of see um, all the creative people in the community kind of pushing each other and coming up with new ideas and really like pushing the boundaries. I think this will be fun to play around with. I love Tripwire with his hand up, just like, yeah, get those mines out of the way and seeing those flails really spinning around and just ripping into things. I hope you enjoyed this video. I love making these videos for you guys and just showing what's going on and sharing this stuff with everyone. I hope we'll see you in the next video, and yo Joe.